Let us be. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God as Father, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And we welcome all of those of you who are out in the world in various places joining us this morning here at Our Lady of Consolation. I'm Father Michael, and today you are part of our family, most especially today on Mother's Day. With that in mind, my friends, we place ourselves in the loving presence of our God. Father in heaven, most especially this day, we ask your blessings and grace upon all of those who are mothers and godmothers and grandmothers and in any way have nurtured others on the path of life. Keep them always in your care. Lord, have mercy. Lord. Raise them up in holiness, grace, and perseverance. Christ, have mercy. Lord. May your love reside in all of our hearts on this beautiful day. Lord, have mercy. Lord. May Almighty God of mercy on us forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of Easter joy, which we keep in honor of our risen Lord, so that we may re relive every single day in remembrance what you have given us in Christ Jesus, who is Lord of our lives forever and ever. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Peter entered, Cornelius met him and falling at his feet, paid him homage. Peter, however, raised him up and said, get up, I myself am a human being. Then Peter proceeded to speak and said, in truth, I see that God shows no partiality. Rather, in every nation, whoever fears him and acts uprightly is acceptable to him. While Peter was still speaking these things, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening to the word. The circumcised believers who had accompanied Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit should have been poured out on the Gentiles also, for they could hear them speaking in tongues and glorifying God. Then Peter responded, can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit, even as we have? He ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Amen. 
Thanks be to God. The psalm is, the Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. The Lord Lord has revealed revealed to the the nations nations his saving power. The Lord has made his salvation known. In the sight of the nations he has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness toward the house of Israel. The The Lord Lord has has revealed revealed to the the nations nations his saving power. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song. Sing praise. The Lord Lord has has revealed to the nations his his saving power. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, let us love one another because love is of God. Everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Whoever is without love does not know God, for God is love. In this way, the love of God was revealed to us. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might have life through him. In this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an expiation for our sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you to do. I no longer call you slaves. A slave does not know what the master is doing. I've called you friends because I have told you everything I heard from my father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear much fruit that will remain, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. This I command you, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. That particular gospel is the one I use for uh, most weddings, because I, I'm, I'm obsessed with the notion of joy, especially in the middle of a pandemic, especially getting older, to constantly keep in one's heart and mind an attitude of joy about life and every single day. And as I've said to you on many, many different occasions, joy is not a, 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 a good joke or a hearty laugh. Joy is a point of view about every single day. And that really is critical because when you get up every single day, you have to go out into the world. Getting up is the easy part. Well, for most of us anyway. Getting up is the easy part. Then you have to go out the door and you have to be in the world. 
and the world is maybe good, maybe bad. I mean, sometimes the, the world hammers away at us and other times it welcomes us and everything goes well in that given day. That's not as often as we might like. So how do you continue to have that attitude of, of joy out in the world that you can smile in the face of adversity? As Shakespeare said, the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, that somehow or other, no matter what comes at you, you can go home and say, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. And that, that's what an attitude of joy really does. And, and, and that's what we have to constantly try to be raising up within ourselves. When I have a married couple sitting here that I'm about to marry, I, I see them as being so very happy, which they better be given that they're sitting here. And uh, I, always, I always let them know, and they're, they're holding hands and they're leaning against one another, you know, and the whole thing. And I let them know, I said, do you realize at this moment all of this is supported by something called the wedding industry? But that next Wednesday, you won't have that. You won't have all of us, all these wonderful people. You have to recreate how you feel in this moment every day for the rest of your life. And that is where, as the old saying goes, the rubber meets the road, because that's, that's the challenging part. You have to find that joy in your marriage every single day and, and continue to fall in love every single day. For all of us, the answer to how you really do this every day is in every one of the readings. Because the early church, here you have the apostles and Peter, and that's what we're listening to in these days of, of the Easter season. They are sending everybody out into the world to more or less convert the world to Jesus Christ in the middle of a hostile Roman Empire. So they're sending people out into the world with this, this notion of letting people know who Jesus Christ was and is. And the key word is love. That's what all the readings are about today, and that's how you surface joy in your life, is through love. And, and that's what they are saying to these people. You know, Christ appeared to them in the upper room. What did he say? He breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit as the Father has sent me. I send you. And I want every one of you in this room and out there watching to know that those are words of power that connect you and I directly to what's going on in that gospel. We are not sitting here listening to pleasant words, ink on a page, and thinking, oh, I had nice readings from the scripture this morning. I'm going to go and get a bagel. It's not enough. We listen to the words because the words inspire us because Peter and, and Paul and all of those people there, they might as well be standing here saying the same thing to us today. The world needs the love that is captured in every heart in this room. You know what it means to the spouses and friends and brothers and sisters sitting next to you now. Well, where do you think it came from? There's one phrase in the gospel. It's a powerful one. Love is from God. That's why we're sitting here. We believe that God who made us placed it in our hearts. That's the exact phrase. I don't need the book in front of me to know it. Love is from God. It is the ultimate gift that resides in every heart in this room, and it's what makes surfacing the joy possible every single day. Love is from God. And he says, this is my commandment. It's twice in the gospel. Love, one. it's a command. It's, it's not like, well, if you're having a good day, you know, you can kiss your wife and your kids, but um, if you're having not such a good day, don't worry about it. That's horrible. You have to every day be in love with the people around you, every single day, not on occasion, because it's a command from God. This is what I command you. Love one another as I love you. And what was in return the gift of love that we got from God? Jesus Christ. It's like a, a kind of like a whole knit together circle, isn't it? That my joy might be yours and your joy might be complete. To sustain that, the gift of love, which is from God, is completely encapsulated in Jesus Christ. I sent, I sent one who looks like you, flesh and blood and bone and everything else, just like you, because you're the finest creation in the universe. So treat each other like you're the finest creation in the universe. 
treat each other that way. And that's what I command you, love one another. The other reading that, that brides always choose is the Corinthians 13. If I am without love, I am a noisy gong, a clanging cymbal. Love endures, love forgives, love does all this. And as, as I'm watching, usually the, the, the maid of honor, the best man, somebody they pick is reading that. I'm kind of looking at them going, are you listening to this? Are you listening to all this? Because if you think you're going to put that into play in your life simply because you heard it in church, well, think again. That's a lot of work. Love forgives. Love understands, love accepts. Yes, it is all those things, but you have to work at that. You have to put love out there in, in the world. You have to put it out there in the world in tangible ways. Mother, you want to know something? Mother's Day, piece of cake. You make a reservation, that's it. Nobody cooks, make a reservation, go out, hugs, kisses, flowers, cards, ah, done. What happens next Wednesday? What kind of day is that going to be? You see, every day should be Mother's Day, Father's Day, Christmas Day, because all of those days that we put on the calendar, they are there, so we just really rev it up, and love is everywhere because it's Mom's Day. What about next Thursday? What about two weeks from now? You see what I mean? Every day we have to work at bringing love into the world, into our lives, and into everyone around us. I've said this to you many times. When I was growing up, I didn't walk out of the house if my father was sitting there without a hug and a kiss from my father. And my father called my sister and I honey and sweetheart to the day he died. So much so that I was teaching, I used to call the kids that all the time. And they still remember that. Still remember that. But my father was always that way. And he would always say, be careful out in the world. Watch out. Where are you going? You know, sometimes he asked too many questions. But that's what fathers do. But I remember there was always this undeniable love that I felt from my dad and from my mom, that we were first and foremost in their lives, and they reinforced it every single day. And I know that you do, do the same for your kids and for your spouses. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. So it's so very important that this command to love one another is fleshed out every single day, that it's not just Mother's Day and Father's Day and Thanksgiving when we really ramp it up. You're Christians. Christ died for you. He gave his life for you. That's kind of more than enough to let us know that the command to love one another is exactly what it says. It's not a suggestion. It's not a nice idea. It's a command. Love one another as I have loved you. You've received the Holy Spirit. Go out into the world because you are sent because you have an undeniable, unbelievable, and unstoppable gift. The love that God placed in your heart the day you were born, it will travel well with you until the day you die, and in between, build the kingdom of God on this earth. Please rise, my friends. As we have been doing, we will now renew the vows of our baptism. My brothers and sisters, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ. We may walk with Him in a newness of life. Now that Lent is long over, the promises of baptism may well serve us as we bring love to the world. Do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death, was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe? God bless you. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water in the Holy Spirit, bestowed on us forgiveness of sins, keep us by His grace, always in His love, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, my friends, we place our prayers and petitions before Almighty God, and the response is, hear us. For mothers everywhere, may they recognize the gift of their children and nurture them with joy. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. For our law enforcement personnel, as we observe National Law Enforcement Week, 
those currently serving and those who have made the ultimate sacrifice, that they may experience our gratitude and the loving embrace of the Father. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. For those who generously share their time, talent, and treasure, Lord, in your mercy, hear us. For the homebound, for those in rehabilitation, and for those in hospice care, Lord, in your mercy, hear us. For those who are in need of our prayers and all who, those who have asked us to pray for them, and for all whose name appear on the sick list in our parish bulletin, may God fill their lives with healing and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. For all who have died to rise with Christ in eternal light, especially Raymond Morton, Jack Capello, Matthew Piccini, Joyce Zacone, Barbara DeSantis, Frank and Lucille Marshall, Francis Mayo, and Carol J. Quinn, for whom this Mass is offered, Lord, in your mercy, hear us. Lord God, in our hearts there are many intentions, needs, and wants. People ask us to pray for them. In a quiet moment, every heart in this room, filled with your love, beckons you to hear the prayers that we keep within ourselves. Let us pray. Father, may our prayer life continue to strengthen us each day. May we offer in supplication and in thanksgiving prayers to you for the life that we have, the joy that we live with every day, and the love for one another which strengthens us. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this beautiful Easter season, to acclaim you all the more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life. The halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful, for his death is our ransom from death. His rising new life it makes us rise as well. Therefore, overcome with Easter joy, every land and people exult in your praise. May our voices be one with theirs in a triumphant hymn of joy. You are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the font of holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending your Spirit upon them, that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. 
for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation. Giving thanks, you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we will be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring us to a fullness of charity. With Francis, our Pope, Kevin, our Bishop, clergy, religious, the entire people, your son has gained for you. Remember also, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, Lord, with the blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with her beloved husband Joseph, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, praising and glorifying you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant our peace and unity in accord with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. We share Christ's peace.
Behold him, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The following are the announcements, remembrances, anniversaries, birthdays, and so on. Happy anniversary to Todd and Michelle Bankin. Many more years together. Wonderful people, dear friends, and um, very much still a part of our parish. Thoughts and prayers go out to Jane Nelson on the loss of her brother-in-law, Robert Morton. Rest in peace, Raymond. We pray for the entire Morton family. We pray for the Capello family on the loss of their father, Jack, a wonderful man now reunited with his wife, Anna. Rest in peace. May is Ocular and Skin Cancer Melanoma Awareness Month. Pray for those afflicted, especially our friend Dave Diarco. May God watch over you and him. 
It is National Teacher Appreciation Week. It has been the most challenging year in history, more than a year, for educators. We thank them for their time and talent, dedication. Please watch over them, protect them, and plant seeds of knowledge that, that last a lifetime in those in their care. This coming week, May 9th to the 15th, is National Police Week. We honor all those who have fallen and those continuing to serve, especially during these challenging times. May God continue to watch over them and their families. This coming Thursday, May 13th, is Ascension Thursday. Bishops of New Jersey have transferred the feast to next Sunday. There will not be Ascension Thursday masses or liturgies. It will be rather um, a Sunday, part of our Sunday liturgy next Sunday. Our thoughts and prayers go out to Joyce Saccone's family. Joyce passed away on Tuesday. Keep her family always in your prayers. May she rest in peace. Tuesday, May 4th, is International Firefighters Day. Always keep firemen in your prayers. They protect us from running into a fire when everyone else is running the other way. Bless them. Always return them to their families safe and sound. We have many birthdays to mention here in the parish. Happiest birthdays go out to John McGorty, Marianne Dirigibus, Franco Mize, our Wayne Councilman, and my former student, John Van Lenten, Michelle DeSantis. Michelle, are you here? You're somewhere, right? There you are. Happy birthday. Where's the cake? Oh, okay. Well, that'll be later. Mimi Manza, our beloved Mimi. Mike and Mimi live right around the corner from here. She and he have been an enormous support to this parish um, and to me. And uh, there's uh, Kimmy and uh, Helen, uh, the two daughters there. And um, just a great family that's an integral part of our parish and everything we do here. This is also Nurses Week. We want to recognize these amazing people who are hardworking, dedicated, and compassionate. You show your selflessness during this past challenging year. Are there any nurses here this morning? There always are, because there are so many of you. One or, there you go. Thank you. As you leave church, um, of course, there are what else? Lint chocolate truffles as a, m m we have cases, we have a truck that comes every week from the Lint company. Um, this is a random act of kindness that I continue to do. Don't believe that because somebody else gets these. Um, but I'll take credit. So please take one, even if you're not a mother, please take a Lint chocolate on your way out. So now we're going to have our Mother's Day blessing. And I want to say hello to two friends out in Lancaster, Bob and Anita, and here, uh, Pat and Robbie. Uh, I love you all. Thank you. And now, um, I'm the star. I get to do that. Uh, would all the mothers, grandmothers, godmothers, and anyone who has nurtured anyone in a mothering way please rise right now? Okay. The response is, um, Lord, hear our prayer. For our mothers who have given us life and love, that we may show them reverence and love, we pray to the Lord. For mothers who have lost a child, that their faith may give them hope and their family and friends support and console them, we pray to the Lord. Amen. For mothers who have died, that God may bring them into the joy of his kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Amen. Loving God, as a mother gives life and nourishment to her children, so you watch over your church. Bless these women, that they may be strengthened as Christian mothers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect through Christ our Lord. Now for the blessing, I would like those closest to mom and grandma to stand up. Put your hands on her shoulder, okay? Because we're all going to confer the blessing. So surround mom or godmother or grandmother. Put your hands together. Hold tight, okay? Because a blessing is given. May Almighty God the Father bless these mothers today and all present here, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And a nice round of applause for the moms. Let us pray. Keep standing. Yeah, don't sit down. Get up. We pray, Almighty God, for these wonderful women here and all of you who may be out there. I hope you held on to mom and grandmom too. We pray that God may bless you with unending love, which is from God, as we heard, and that today you may celebrate with joy in your hearts through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. 
May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Celebration is ended. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord and each other.